Christian complains. Right. Preach, Max. Say it. This minor prophet opens up different than any other book in the Bible. He's opened up by complaining. Oh, Jesus. Most books open up and give a, a brief autobiography about the writer. Sometimes it tells, as Paul writes that, I, Paul, who was an apostle, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Well. Mm. So on occasion, we talk about when Joshua was anointed uh, and appointed as the commander of the army. He said, now my, my servant Moses is dead. Uh -huh. Some books will give you a little geometry. So i tell you, he said, and Adam knew Eve. Mm. Well. And it will share with you, give you some history about what you're about to read. But Habakkuk here jumped right into complaining. That's right. Oh, Jesus. Say it. And, and he jumped in and complained. Don't get, yeah, he don't be, he did not beat around the bush. You know, yeah. sometimes you have to set some people down and you ask them how's the weather and how's the children before you tell them what you really mm. on your mind. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to beat around the bush. Some people, when they have a job, knowing they're about to get fired, that they make them work the whole shift. <laughs> they do it. Oh. Let them go. Oh, Jesus. Let them go. Yeah. And so Rebecca jumps right into it. He did not beat around the bush. He jumped right into it and started complaining. Uh -huh about the injustice what was going on. My and now, uh, notice here, I'm gonna cut a whole lot of this out from that. Uh, but this is what he does, and he keeps complaining about the burden of the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's complaining about the burden to, uh, about the people to none other than God himself. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you know, I know I'm not by myself that, you know, we do have some burdens. That's right. Because if we didn't have some burdens, we wouldn't say a song, take your burdens to the Lord. Yeah. And leave them there. If we didn't have some burdens, we wouldn't read and say, man, I take my yoke and learn of me, and I will make, you, make your burden light. Yeah, if we didn't yeah. have any burdens. And so, heck, I hear Rebecca here, and now he is complaining about the burden that is on the people, and that God is sitting high, looking low, and is not doing anything about it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Lord, have mercy. How dare you, God? You said, God, here, that you're not doing nothing, and, and you're in control. You said that you bump into yourself. You're so big, and you everlasting, and from everlasting, that you bump into yourself. You made the hyena the laugh, and made, made the cow to have to give off some milk. Yeah. And you made not the, the fish to swim in the sea and breathe, but here you are. We are suffering. We are under oppression, and you're not doing nothing about it. Yeah. You said, and you said, Lord, you take care of the little bird, and here we are, and that here we were your child, too, and you, that you blew light into us, and here I am suffering down here on earth. And we had to ask a question and said, Lord, where are you? Yeah. Well, I must be by myself. I just want to have it. Say it. Yeah, where are you? Said, Lord, where, where, where are you? And so he, is, he have a burden now that he is complaining now to God about the burden is on him and the people. Yeah. Lord have mercy. But look now in the next verse here, you see what he does. Not only he had a burden, then he has a question for God. All right. He asked now God a question. Well. He asked God now, how long shall I have this affliction? Yeah. <laughs> Now, when I was growing up, the old preacher used to tell me, never question God. Right. Uh -huh. When I grew up a little, got a little older, I read in the Bible where Jesus himself questioned right. himself. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then he gets a little theolo theological on you right quick. That Jesus questioned his own self because on the fourth word from the cross, my Jesus God. said, my God, my God. Because he couldn't ask nobody else. He asked himself, who is God? Himself wrapped in the flesh. said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Yeah. 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 And you know, every now and then we had to ask the question, God, why am I having so much pain? Why am I having so much pain? Why am I having so much pain? So much pain? So much pain? So much pain? And we got to ask God some question, Lord, I'm trying to do everything right. I give my time every now and then. I come to church every now and then. I come to Bible class 
every now and then. I love my neighbor every now and then. But why are you catching so much hell? Wake up, wake up. Bedtime. 
<laughs> if faith comes by hearing, uh -huh. and hearing by the word of God, those people who sleep don't need no faith. Oh, say it. Tell them. Okay, I'm going to get that for those who the cast tech. Uh, if faith comes by him, <laughs> tell him, <laughs> tell him, and hearing by the word of God, yeah. when those people are sleeping, as the OJ said, your body is here. <laughs> so I'm at the I see. Yeah. It's on the other side of town. That you don't, and you don't need no faith. It's a shame now. People will stand up on singing but go to sleep on preaching. Oh, yeah. 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 And I know we stand up on the word of God, but see, we stand up on the word of God, but we're going to live on the word of God. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And that, that here, we feel the church up for a wedding that ain't going to last long. That we feel the church up for a funeral that ain't going to hell. But yeah. we can't come to church now at all to serve the living and true God. Yeah. Preach, Doc. You preach. And so, so when you're in the storm, now Satan messes with your mind. And tell you that you can't make it, that, that you've been in a storm too long, you done did too many bad things. But see, that I know that when you've been in a storm, it ought to draw you closer to God because the book of James said, I count it all joy. I count my fall, I count my failure, I count my baptism, I count those hate and I count those I count those designs and I'm getting I count it all joy. Because my falling down to it, it brings on maturity. Yeah, yeah. Hey. And so when you're in the storm, too, when you're going through, you for how long? Somebody else who's been through the same thing that you've been through, you can look at them and say, if the same God done bless you, I know he can bless me, too. But if you don't see what God can do, what he's done for others, he can do for you, too. Say hey. Yeah. And see, when you come to the assembly of Christ, that you will get something that you can take back home for you. You know, you say, well, I know I'm going to come to church and, and I'll get to work because I got to pay the DTE bill. I don't have no money. I don't have no friends I'm going to buy from. My ATM is, is got a negative in front of the Lord. You promise it will work. Excuses. That you'll take care of me. Yeah, yeah. And you go home and start cleaning. So I said, the Lord will make the way. Get some energy. Lift up the couch with the bathroom clean. Go on cleaning up the house. Getting pine and salt. And somebody goes, what you doing? I'm cleaning up the sand. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. Start cooking. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. Start texting. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. You start feeling good. Make it over. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. Yeah. And you go to the street and see why you trying to fix shared this story a long time ago with a fish right here um, that he said when, when he was about eight years old and he was the baby in the family and his, his but my grandmother uh, told him to go to bed he said but, he said mom I'm home he said well you can't be home you go to sleep just go to bed yeah <laughs> starving like mother <laughs> starving <laughs> So all the siblings went to bed. Dream about it. Hungry. Yeah. My daddy said he got up around in the in midnight hour and had to go to the outhouse. They had a restroom or bathroom, had to go to the outhouse. And, and he noticed that he walked by the kitchen that, that my grandmother, his mother, was there in the kitchen just sitting there praying and crying at the same time. All right. All right. And he didn't pay no attention that he saw she crying and he didn't go bother us. And he went to the outhouse, came back out of bed, hungry. Yeah. Got up in the morning, all of a sudden he smelled some food coming from the kitchen. Yeah. And, and he said, my, his brother, Uncle, my uncle, Uncle Joe, asked, he said, he said, Mama, where did the food come from? He said, well, your Uncle Pox um, this morning said he couldn't sleep last night. Yeah. 
He said that there's my sister has 12 children. Mm. That husband is in the army. Mm. And have all these children with no food. He said, and I couldn't sleep. He stopped by the general store. Mm. So he got four grocery bags of food. And got some clothes for your ch little children here. And so that, and, and I, I was praying last night, didn't know how I was going to make it, but he said the Lord placed on his heart this morning. <laughs> I tell you, when you try to figure it out, God already worked it out. Yeah. <laughs> And so you got your own testimony there that when you trying to fit, when your back was up against the wall, yeah, and you couldn't yeah. see no way, when the tunnel was dark, when prayer had came few, that God out of somewhere, out of nowhere, yeah. that can lift you up. Yeah. When doctors had walked out, God walked in, when doctors said you ain't gonna make it, that you got parents, you got your team, you got you all gonna be it, but you are still here on the brink of 214, and the doctors not so ready. Yeah, I see. 